They set up a cell for Sokolov in the old kennel. Shackles and everything. It'll be a shock, him waking up in the straw and old dog poop. But from what I hear, he's woken up worse places. Guess we all have at that. I doubt a dozen soldiers could have done it better. Sokolov's knowledge will enable us to strike at the Lord Regent directly, and ultimately help you get your life back. Soon, we won't have to hide in the shadows. The Royal Physician is brilliant, but he was a fool to protect the Lord Regent. Sokolov gave us the elixir, the war machine. It could have made us a great nation. Now he pays the price for siding with a tyrant. You have my thanks, sir. If you wish to get some sleep, now is a good time. I hope they don't have to hurt him. He's done some good in his time. Made that elixir against the plague, he did. I'm working on a new arc pylon. It will perform absolutely stunning acts of destruction, I expect. Normally, I'm a natural philosopher, but today, consider me a humble craftsman here to serve. far as anyone's guess. He says what they want to hear. Friend of the rich. That's his method. Sokolov's true genius is pampering the aristocracy. Fools. Now that we have Sokolov as a guest, ask him how he deluded the academy into making him royal physician. Ask him how he stole my elixir formula. Will you do that for me? Attention. Corvo, can I tell you something? I have a secret retreat nearby that may come in handy if the city watch ever kicks in the doors. It's an abandoned apartment across the street from the bar. I don't think anyone else here knows about it, but I'm guessing I can trust you. The key is stashed under my bunk upstairs. If there's ever trouble, you can go there for safety. I know I will. Lord Pendleton, Memoirs, Chapter 41 in which I bed two of the Boyle women, and only missed the third by virtue of some inclement weather. It was the month of rain, and to counter the gloom, the Boyle ladies hosted three nights of merriment by invitation only. Lydia was most fetching in lavender pants and a tunic of yellow silk. She was pleased with me from the moment I walked in the door, with my manservant bringing not one, but two cases of effervescent wine from the south. In fact, I had come laden with gifts, such that all three Boyle women soon took notice, and they set out to make me more than welcome. We uncorked the wine right away, and as night fell, we... Wallace! Found these interruptions. No 
Don't worry. We won't start the interrogation without you. The royal physician is badly shaken up. I'll have the servants see to his new quarters. Take a night's rest, and then you can help interrogate him. Property and rights of We're getting closer to reaching our goal, but our position is becoming more dangerous. You don't house and feed a half dozen people without leaving telltale traces. Riverboats pass day and night, and the looters are going to start gathering once they're sure the plague has burned the place out. I conclude, if our enemies are not dead by the month of wind, we will be. There's a sadness in Emily, but she's strong. Weathering the death of her mother just a half a year ago better than most grown men I've known. Once we take Dunwall Tower, I'll see that her life is better. I've always thought that I'd command the Navy in her name, but sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't just take the title Lord Regent and do it properly. Where do I find a good meal around here? If you think prison food's bad, you should see what the Abbey serves its captives. I think the overseers make it themselves. Attention, Dunwall citizens. You are required to boil any water from public fountains or the river. Anyone who has consumed untreated water must be reported to the watch. Please be as quiet as you can. It took forever for Emily to fall asleep. Poor dear. It's okay, Emily, I'm here. She seems happier when you're here. Though I know you have important things to do. Out there, in the city. There's hardly a need to work on table etiquette. She knows it all, even if she chooses not to employ it. She'd rather hold her spoon by the wrong end and pretend it's a sword. Then suddenly she changes and she's all manners, asking for a tea party. I tried to oblige her, but I have little to work with. No proper plates instead of a cloth napkin. I've only the bar rack. Ale mugs instead of teacups. I've asked for things befitting her, but they have their minds on other things. For now, Emily and I decided to make a pretend dinner using paper and little things she's found here and there. On the floor, I suppose. Not right for a princess, but it'll have to do. She still has bad dreams. Though it's understandable, given all she's been through. Sometimes she calls out your name. Sometimes she cries for her mother.
You were making funny faces while you were sleeping. I decided to nap here in your room while Callista was taking her bath. She told me if there's ever trouble, I should always run here. Callista will come get me when she's done with her bath. Thanks, Corvo. It makes me feel better. Dear Uncle, it's been a while since I've heard from you, and with the way things are going, I can't be sure we'll see each other again. I just wanted to tell you I'm doing well, and I'm safe, for now. My job, caring for a young girl, is better than I expected, though she can be very trying. But I'm treated well. There is enough to eat. I fare better than most, I suppose. We are the last of our family, Uncle Kurnow. We just have to go on living, if we can. May we see each other soon. Your niece, Callista. Let us all praise their choice. The dance of investiture will take place without... I know it looks... I was inventing a new kind of lock. The tumblers shaped like snowflakes. Okay. The truth is, there is no snowflake lock. I was just, you know, looking through the lock. I realize, well, everything you're thinking I already realize. I'm a natural philosopher, but that doesn't mean I'm not a gentleman, or I try to be one. Good morning, Corvo. I believe Sokolov is awake now. The Admiral is with him now. I'm sure they are ready to start on your arrival. Display your pride in Dunwall. The property and rights of... jealous of my agile brain and youthful energies. But he's dead now. And what can I say about him? Sokolov, he did improve on some inventions. He did well for himself in his way. He had many admirers among the aristocracy, especially those who lack a solid background in matters of natural philosophy. He was a painter of portraits. They say his work was genius. That remains to be seen. Time will tell. I hope Sokolov will cooperate. I'd hope to have him paint my portrait again one day. Just me this time. 
It's not that I object to holding Royal hostage physician. for a while. I believe Since you and Corvo knew each other in former days. Unlike you, our friend Corvo knows what loyalty means. Bah! I am loyal to my inner spirit. You are the one consorting with the most wanted man in the Empire. It's my belief that Corvo was innocent in the death of the Empress. And the former spymaster, or the Lord Regent, as he calls himself, is a ruthless tyrant bent on destroying the city, the heart of the Empire. You are mistaken if you think there's love between me and our Lord Regent. But whatever you intend to do here, I assure you, I am beyond petty scare tactics. If I don't scare you, Sokolov, perhaps these rats will. Even if they don't carry clay, I've heard of a swarm of rats stripping a child's body to the bone in half a minute. I've heard worse. How long do you think it'll be before you talk? Before you beg to talk? Rats? Is that the company you keep now, Admiral? It's the company you keep that interests us so long. We know you painted a portrait of the Lord Regent's mistress. The very aristocrat who is funding the military with her fortune. She is the key to the Lord Regent's control over the city, and we must have her name. Sorry, Admiral. I cannot help you. You're part of this rabble, but I know you have your reasons. Yes, he does. All we need is the name of the Lord Regent's mistress. It's very simple. I elect not to tell you. You will have to force the words from me, and I warn you, my willpower is quite legendary. A curious strategy. Of which I approve. I could use a drink. Not the swill to be found here, but the fine spirits. It's well known that Sokolov is virtually addicted to a rare liquor called King Street Brandy. The taste is revolting, but I happen to have a bottle. However, I am reluctant to give it to you for Sokolov. It cost me quite a lot. It is very expensive stuff, a blend of rare Pendisian spices and a drop of whale oil. Would you care to purchase it? Brandy. I didn't know any more existed. It is an extraordinary gift. I see I'm dealing with men of taste. I can tell you this much. She was always referred to as Lady Boyle. I painted her to be sure, but I never saw her face or learned her first name. You see, I painted her from behind. I assure you, she still makes a striking portrait. But I do not know which boil she is. I was to be introduced to her at a masked ball in her honor this very night. But I will miss that party, it seems. A masked ball at the Boyle estate. Tonight, the timing is perfect, Corvo. But the Boyles are wealthy and ruthless, so security will be very tight. Of course, you already have a mask, don't you, Corvo? He's right. You will be able to mingle with them once you're on the ground. 
You'll have to find out which of the Boyle women is connected to the Lord Regent and take her out in whatever way you can devise. We're very close now. If you do this tonight, we'll be able to strike at the Lord Regent himself and put Emily on the throne. May the wind favor you. I hear you're off to the Boyle's little bash tonight. I have just a tiny favor I'd like to ask you. Could you give this note to Lord Shaw? You'll know him. A rather brusque man wearing a wolf's mask. In fact, he may be looking for me. Costume ball, huh? Well, that'll be fun, but not for everybody. You ready? <laughs> 